The purpose of this demonstration is to show you how to register for an Atrezzo Provider Portal account, how to add and manage your users, and the other functionalities available to the administrators. Each provider group will want to designate a provider group administrator to create the registration of the account. That person will then be able to add and manage users for that provider group. The registration can only be completed once. Please be sure that you discuss this internally among your staff and supervisors. If you already have a Provider Portal user account, you can add your MPI to that existing account. From the login screen, you will need to register. In the center of the screen, it says, if you don't already have a Keepro account, you can register here. You will click Register Here. You will then enter your MPI number and the provider registration code. To obtain the provider registration code, you will need to contact the Customer Support Center. Once again, to obtain the provider registration code, you will contact the Customer Support Center. Then you will click Next. You will then create a username. The system will notify you right away if that username is available or unavailable. You will then enter the required fields that are indicated by the red asterisk. So you will complete the first name, the last name, the email address. You will then confirm your email and enter your fax number. Then click Next. Your registration has been successful. You will now receive an email and that email will walk you through the remaining processes to complete registration. Here is the email with the Atrezzo registration link. Once you complete the initial registration steps, you only have 20 minutes to complete the rest of the registration process. Once again, you will only have 20 minutes to complete the rest of the registration process. Once you receive the email, you will click Atrezzo Registration. This will bring you to another page where you will then create your multi-factor authentication information. This is an added layer of protection and allows us to know you are who you say you are. There is a lot of PHI in the system and this helps keep all that information safe. This is a similar process as you may be used to when logging into your banking or credit card account. You have two options to choose from. You can log in with phone or you can log in with email. It is important to know that when you select your login method, you are choosing how you will receive your verification code. The phone option should only be used when you have access to a 10-digit direct phone number, whether a landline or mobile phone. Extensions are not supported. If you do not have access to a direct line, you will choose the email option. For demonstration purposes, I will select phone because it will show you the process for both email and phone. The next thing you will do is enter your email address. You will not enter any information into the new password or the confirmed password yet. You first must verify your email address. Click Send Verification Code. The verification code will be sent to your email, and once received, you will enter in your verification code. Then click Verify Code. The email address has been verified. You will now enter the new password 
and confirm your new password. Here, you are actually creating your login user ID and password. Then click Create. This section will cover the phone verification. You will then enter your phone number. You can select Send Code or Call Me. Send Code will send an SMS text message to your mobile device. Call Me will prompt a phone call where you will enter a specific digit to verify your identity. I will click Send Code. You will notice that there is not an action button. The system will automatically verify your information once you enter in the verification code. The page will refresh and the terms of use agreement will then be displayed. You will read the terms of use agreement, scroll to the bottom, and check the box that you have read and agree to these terms. Then click Continue. The registration and creation of the multi-factor authentication process is a one-time process. You will log in with the multi-factor authentication process each time you access the system. To demonstrate the login process, I will log out and return to the login screen. When logging in, you will use the Customer Provider side, located on the right. You will choose the Login with Phone or Login with Email, depending on how you registered your account. If you do not have your phone with you, and you only have access to your email, you can always select Login with Email. I want to draw your attention to the box that says Remember Me. Each time you log into the portal, you have to verify your multi-factor authentication. If you access the system on a regular, consistent basis throughout the day, you can click Remember Me. You will receive a reminder that you should only use this feature on a private device. Remember Me should not be used if you are sharing a computer. I will click OK to dismiss. If you click Remember Me before selecting your login method, the system will remember you for four hours, which means you will not have to complete the multi-factor authentication for those four hours. I will click Login with Phone for my demonstration. You will enter in your email address and password and click Sign In. You will then be directed to Send Code or Call Me. This is a similar process as before when you were registering your account. I will click Send Code. When the code is received, you will enter the code and the system will automatically verify your account. The screen will refresh and bring you to the home screen of the provider portal. I will now demonstrate how to reset your password. Once again, from the login screen, you will choose the login with phone or login with email. I will choose login with phone. And below the fields to enter your email address and password, there is a hyperlink that says forgot your password. If you have forgotten your password, you will click Forgot Your Password. You will then enter your email address. Then click Send Verification Code. You will receive the verification code in your email. You will enter the code into the verification code box. Then click Verify Code. The email address has been verified. You will then click Continue. I will now select whether the system will send a code or call me. I will click Send Code. I will enter the code into the verification code box. 
and I will now enter in my new password and confirm my new password. Then click continue. The password has been reset and we are back to the home screen of the Atrezzo Provider Portal. I will now begin the demonstration of the administrative role and how to add and manage users. From the home page, you will work in the setup option. This is located at the top of the navigational pane. To add and manage users, click Setup. You will see that we as the provider group will display. In this section of Manage Provider Groups, I will add additional users if needed for my location. The setup option is only available to provider group administrators and group admins. If you oversee more than one provider, you can enter additional MPIs under your login. To add additional facilities or providers, you will click Register New Provider. You will enter the MPI number and the provider registration code. Click Find Provider. The provider will display below. You will check the box, then click Select, and the provider will be added to your group. To add additional users, you will want to work under the Manage Provider Groups tab. You will expand the provider group listed by clicking on the arrow. Then click Add New User. As the provider group administrator, you will need to create the username. If the username is available, you will receive an indicator right away that the username is available. If you select a username that is already in use, you will receive an indicator that the username is unavailable. You will now complete the required fields for the user. You will enter the first name, last name, and email address. You will use the work email address for this user. Then you will confirm the email. You will enter the fax number for this user. Please note that this does not have to be an individual fax number. This can be the fax number for your group. Click Create. The user will be added. Under Manage Users, you will be able to see all the users that have been added to your group. To add additional users, you will navigate back to Manage Provider Groups. Expand the group by clicking on the arrow and click Add New User. You will complete the required information then click Create, and the user has been added. I will return to Manage Provider Groups and expand the group by clicking on the arrow. Once all users have been added, they will be listed at the bottom. The role will automatically default to Provider Staff Account. The Provider Staff Account is a general user account. These users can enter prior authorization requests into the portal as well as view determination letters, obtain status updates, and message with the Utilization Management Review Team as needed. The Provider Group Administrator has permissions to add and manage users for that provider group. If you would like to add additional administrators, you would select the user role from the drop-down. Then select Provider Admin or Provider Group Admin. The Provider Group Admin has the ability to add and manage users for all the providers in the group. 
If there are multiple provider groups being managed by one account, you would want to select Provider Group Admin. The Provider Admin role has the ability to add and manage users, but for only the one provider they are associated with as the Provider Admin. Email addresses and usernames can only be used once. The Atrezzo Provider Portal will allow us to add users to as many locations as necessary by the group administrator. To add a user to one of the locations listed within my group, you will click on the Available Users drop-down and select the user. Click Add and the user will be added to this location. The user role defaults to Provider Staff Account, and you can change the role by clicking on the drop-down. If you have a user that no longer needs access to this location and you need to remove them, you can click on the trash can. You will receive an alert that you are about to remove this user, are you sure? Click Confirm to remove and the user has been removed. All of this is completed under the Manage Provider Groups. Now we are going to move over to Manage Users. In order to manage a user, you will expand that user by clicking on the arrow. Here we have the ability to make an update if an email address or fax number has changed. You will click on the pencil icon to edit the user. If the user needs assistance with resetting their multi-factor authentication, this would be done if their email address or phone number has changed, or if the user did not activate their multi-factor authentication within two days. You will click Reset Registration and it will remove all association with the multi-factor authentication account. You will click OK to verify. And it will remove all associations with the multi-factor authentication account. The user will receive an email that their credentials have been reset and they will be provided with a link to complete the registration process. They must complete the multi-factor authentication registration within two days. Under contact information, additional information can be added or updated as needed. You will notice that there is not a save button on this page. If you add an address for this user, when you click out of the box, that information will automatically save. Once you have completed all the changes for the account, you can close the section by clicking on the arrow. When we expand it, we will be able to see the information as well as the providers that this user is associated with. You can also select the user role here under Manage Users. However, to add a new user, you have to work under the Manage Provider Groups tab. This ensures that the users are added to the appropriate provider. Once all users have been added to the provider account, they will receive an email to complete the multi-factor authentication registration process. This process will look the same as what was previously demonstrated in the video. They will begin with a link in their email then they are given the option to register with phone or register with email. The process of adding and managing users will only need to be completed for any new users that need to be added to the provider account. When a user is no longer active or no longer needs access to the provider account, the provider group administrator can remove them. From the Manage Users tab, you will expand the user you wish to deactivate. You would then click on the trash can icon to deactivate. You will receive an informational message to confirm you are about to permanently remove the user. Are you sure? You would select cancel if no, 
confirm if yes. The page will refresh and we will go from having four users to the three users that are currently being displayed. To add new users, you would select Manage Provider Groups, expand the provider, and click Add New User. You would enter the required fields, and then click Create. This process would be repeated for each user you need added to this provider account. I will now demonstrate another functionality that is only available to administrators. In the navigational pane, click Preferences. Under Preferences, you can set your preferred providers or facilities, PCP or facility, attending physicians, procedure codes, and diagnosis codes for your group. For my example, I will expand out procedure code by clicking on the arrow. You will select your code type from the drop-down box. For my example, I will choose CPT. And then we will enter our code. Click search. The code will display and you will select the code by clicking the box. The code will be added to your preferred list. I will now select my preferred diagnosis code. I will expand the ribbon and enter the code. Click search. The code will display and I will select the code. And the code has been added to my preferred list. If you need to delete a code, you can click on the trash can. You will receive a disclaimer. Are you sure you want to delete this record? Click OK to delete. And the diagnosis code has been removed. This function comes in handy when you select the same services for your consumers. It allows the users that create prior authorizations to select the information in a faster and easier manner. This concludes the demonstration of the Provider Group Administrative role in adding and managing users.